Good afternoon and welcome to Brewing with Scott Leffler. I'm your host. My name is Scott Leffler. It is 12.30 in the p.m. this Monday, September 17th, 2012. Got a bunch of things to talk about today. Uh, probably go 15 minutes-ish, I'm guessing. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but I do have uh, several things to talk about all in today's news. Some things you probably heard about, some things you probably haven't. Um, brewing in the living room again today. Uh, it was the kitchen for a while, now it's the living room. One of these days, maybe you'll see my bathroom. Actually, um, my bathroom is huge. I could actually do a show in there or have a dance or whatever. Um, I'm Scott Leffler. If you're new to the show, thanks for tuning in. Um, I am a newspaper columnist and editor, former radio talk show host, uh, and all-around good guy. Just ask everybody. Actually, not everybody. Some people would disagree with you. Actually, it's funny. I ran into a guy on the street uh, Saturday. I have no concept of what day it is lately. I think it was Saturday. I ran into a guy on the street, and uh, he recognized me. Uh, this is one of the dangers of having my photo in the newspaper every week. But he recognized me and he goes, Scott Leffler! And I said, that would be me. And uh, he introduced himself and said, you know, I, write, I send you emails all the time. And I said, eh, well, you don't send me emails that often. I recognized his name and I recognized his emails. He then went on to tell me that Barack Obama is a closet Muslim who hates America and wants to destroy it from the inside. So, yeah, that. Look, here's the deal. Um, if you are new to the show, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm not a Barack Obama fan. I also don't hate the guy. I certainly don't think he's a closet socialist Muslim who wants to destroy America from the inside, or from any side for that matter. I think that he wants what he thinks is best for America. I just disagree with some of those ideals. Mitt Romney, on the other hand, um, he wants what's best for America from his point of view. And I disagree with some of his ideals as well. I'm sort of a middle guy, radical centrist, I like to refer to myself. So today we're going to talk about Barack Obama. We're going to talk about Mitt Romney. We're going to talk about Rick Santorum. We're going to talk about Nancy Pelosi. Um, we're going to talk about the new iPhone. We're going to talk about Nicki Minaj. Um, we're going to talk about people in Pennsylvania that can't spell, which I'm pretty sure is everyone in Pennsylvania. Let's start with a cup of coffee. It is, after all, brewing with Scott Leffler, but I have to work later today, so we're brewing coffee. One of these days when I don't have to work later in the day, I will brew some beer and we will uh, do the show that way. Actually, this Friday might be a good time to do that. Let's do that! Friday! We're drinking beer for lunch because I'm an adult and I can. I don't act like an adult, but I am one. Uh, Barack Obama currently leads the polls by three to six percentage points, depending on what poll you read. Uh, if you go to Nate Silver's website, uh, 538.newyorktimes.com or something like 538blog.newyorktimes.com. I don't know. Google Nick. Uh, how did I just forget his name? Huh. Nate. Nate Silver. Google Nate Silver and you will find his blog. Um, currently, he has Obama up by about three percentage points. That's probably about accurate. This is going to be a close election. However, a poll that was done recently shows that nearly 6 in 10 people, 59% to be exact, believe that Barack Obama will win. Now that means that all of the people that vote for him think he's going to win, and about 20% of the people who say they're not going to vote for him still think he's going to win. Now the reason for that, according to the survey, 34% uh, by the way believe that Mitt Romney will win, and why these percentage polls never add up to 100, I have no idea, but there are 7% of people that are just missing. They, they don't know. They didn't know there was a presidential election this year, and yet these people are still allowed to vote. That's scary. Anyway, um, the reason for this, according to the poll findings, is that people believe that the media is in the bag for Barack Obama. Now, there's always been this concept of the liberal media. I am part of the media. I'm not liberal. In fact, most of the people that I know that I work with aren't liberal. In fact, most of the people that I have ever worked with at any newspaper or radio station uh, in the state of New York or Ohio, uh, most of them aren't liberal. There are some liberals in there, of course, but for the most part, nah, people are middle of the road. Journalists, for the most part, I find really try to stay middle of the road. They try to view things from both sides. That probably, I don't know if I'm a member of the media because I'm a libertarian or if I'm a trained libertarian because I'm a member of the media and I'm taught to view both sides equally. I don't know. Um, but I find that most people in the media um, our middle of the road. But people think that the media is in the bag for Obama. I don't know that I believe that. I think the media has been plenty harsh to Barack Obama, but I know that they've also been harsh to Mitt Romney, for example, and just this past weekend they were 
fairly harsh to Rick Santorum. Now, I don't know if you've heard anything about the story. Rick Santorum's sarcasm. Rick Santorum was giving a speech the other day, and, uh, and he made this comment that maybe he'll grow to wish he didn't make, but the peeps are some people that are making it out to be something that it is completely not. We're going to do something new today. We're adding audio. Audio. Now, a lot of people picked up on this and said, oh, Rick Santorum says the smart people will never be Republicans. Therefore, obviously, smart people are Democrats. Therefore, Rick Santorum is saying you would be stupid to vote Republican. Uh, no, 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 that's not what he's saying at all. Um, I'll put a link to this YouTube video. You can watch it there. Um, I'll do that in the show notes later on. But uh, what Rick Santorum is really saying is that the people who think they're smart will never be on the conservatives side. Now, there's a big difference with conservatives and, and liberals. Both use humor and both use sarcasm, but they use it differently. I find that for the most part, and I'm generalizing here, I'll do that once in a while, but I believe that I'm right. I find that for the most part, conservatives are dry. They're, um, their sarcasm is a bit lacking. You can't always tell that it's sarcasm. The same with humor. The things that conservatives find funny, liberals don't necessarily find funny because liberals are more, they're more over the top. They're more flamboyant, if you will. Um, think Barney Frank. But conservatives, meanwhile, they're always, they're always much more reserved, almost British. And not that I'm going to hold that against them. There's nothing wrong with being British. But the people who use that, who employ that sarcasm while doing it very dryly, while not being over-exaggerated and doing it over the top, they risk the danger of being misinterpreted. They risk the danger of their sarcasm not translating. Now, Rush Limbaugh does this. He does this sarcasm thing, right? And people don't always get it. Sometimes I don't get it. And sometimes I think that he's lying when he later says that he's being sarcastic. Because I think he wasn't being sarcastic, but then goes, Oh, I said something stupid. I should claim that that was sarcasm. Um, like the whole you didn't build it thing. Uh, you know, he, the sarcasm thing. If, it, if he was truly being sarcastic when he was berating Barack Obama for his you didn't build it comments, then it, it got lost on a lot, a lot of people. Now, maybe conservatives, real conservatives, I'm not, I'm a libertarian, I'm conservative on some things, liberal on others. Um, maybe real conservatives really do get that sarcasm. But I most certainly didn't, and I have a feeling a lot of people didn't. And here's one of the dangers. Sarcasm doesn't translate to print. So when someone says something sarcastically, you can hear it in their voice. You know, oh, I hate coffee. Um, anybody who knows me would know that I don't really hate coffee. And if you catch the intonation there, oh, I hate coffee. Um, you might see that I am being sarcastic, although that's not necessarily a really good example. I don't know. Sarcasm is one of my languages, but apparently I can't do it on cue. Um, but when someone would print that, it would just say, Scott Leffler says, I hate coffee. And they don't note that it's in a sarcastic tone. Usually the media doesn't note the tone that something was spoken in. They just say it, and you're expected to get it from context clues. But when there are no context clues, or when the media doesn't see the sarcasm, they don't know they're being sarcastic, then a lot of times that gets missed. Now, Rick Santorum here, I see his sarcasm. And I hope that other people do too. And then I think that conservatives who see the sarcasm, who then note that he's being bashed, if you will, by the liberal media, believe that, oh, well, the media is obviously out to get Santorum. It's not that they're out to get Santorum, it's that they don't get him. It's not that they're out to get Mitt Romney, it's that they don't get him. And the same is true, by the way, with Barack Obama. They're not out to get him, and of course, conservatives would say they're not out to get him at all, they're treating him really, really well. Um, I see plenty of negative stories about the president. Um, they're really not holding his hand and helping like you would believe that they were. Bill Clinton, we heard this all the time, the liberal media during Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton got roasted by the media on a daily basis. And then they try to say that there's a liberal media. This concept of a liberal media is a complete farce, and I find it comical. Back to poll numbers for a second. Nancy Pelosi, 
Sorry, need more coffee. I need a table right here. I don't have one. I could set it, let's see, I could set it right there and hope that it just doesn't fall. You can't see where I'm setting it, but I set it on my coffee table, which is in my living room, because I'm broadcasting from my living room, because this show is not professional at all. Although I do wear nice shirts, or at least I try to. Um, although, half an hour ago, I was still wearing the shirt that I was wearing yesterday, because I neglected to go to bed last night, something that I do occasionally, and last night was one of those days, which would not be so bad if I didn't have a meeting at 3.15, and then another one at 4, and then work from 5 until 1 in the morning-ish. So it appears as though there will be no sleep until Brooklyn. Unfortunately, I'm not going to Brooklyn. I'm going to work. Nancy Pelosi, that's where we were. Nancy Pelosi said over the weekend that she thinks that the Democrats have an excellent chance of retaking Congress. Now, I can understand to a degree why former Speaker Pelosi would think that the Democrats have an excellent chance of retaking Congress. Congress does have a 13.3% approval rating. That's up, by the way, actually. It was 12% last month. It's 13.3% right now. Nancy Pelosi says, well, if everybody hates their congressmen and we're currently in the minority and we flip out all the people, then we'll take the majority. I think Nancy Pelosi is delusional or she's speaking in jest or she just has no clue what's going on in the country. The latest um, Real Clear Politics poll shows that the Republicans will have 229 House seats in the coming election. The Democrats will have 183, and that in actuality there are 23 toss-ups. Now, you need 218 for a majority. Um, so the Democrats are not going to get 218 if the Republicans already have 229. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is wishful thinking, she's speaking in jest, or she's just batty. I think she might just be batty. I'm not really sure. The Apple iPhone 5. Now, it was um, it was announced a week ago, and then they had pre-sales over the weekend. I think the pre-sales started at like 3 a.m. Saturday morning or something stupid like that. Apple says that nearly 2 million people have pre-ordered the iPhone 5. 2 million people. That is nearly 1% of American adults have pre-ordered the iPhone 5. That's a lot of people to pre-order a phone, which quite frankly, isn't that big of an upgrade from the iPhone 4S. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here, I am a Google fanboy. I have an Android, I have an HTC Evo 4G, I love it. Um, so, I, I like my Android phone, and I would never own an iPhone unless they were the last phones on Earth, which I know Apple is trying to make that happen because they're pretty much trying to outlaw everything that isn't them because apparently they invented phones and so anything that looks like a phone or acts like a phone in any way shape or manner is obviously copying the iPhone. What a bunch of crap. Um, now two million people have, have pre-ordered this iPhone 5. Jimmy Kimmel uh, of Jimmy Kimmel Live Brewing with Scott Leffler. See, that's my cue. Every time I get thirsty and need to take a sip of my coffee, I say brewing with Scott Leffler. Although I have not yet reminded you today that you can tweet me live during the show um, via my Twitter handle, which is at Scott Leffler. So if you go to twitter.com uh, slash Scott Leffler, you can tweet me, and I will get it right in this little chat window thing that I have right here. You can't see it, but it's right there. There's a chat window. It pops right up right in the middle of the show, and it says, Hey, Leffler, I think you're an idiot. Or, hey, Leffler, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Or, um, you know, please buy porn. I, don't, I, I get a lot of uh, spam tweets. So I think they're spam. It could actually be friends of mine telling me to buy porn for them. I'm not really sure. Um, but back to, um, back to the iPhone 5. So Jimmy Kimmel uh, last week took an iPhone 4S out onto the streets of wherever it is that Jimmy Kimmel broadcasts from and showed it to people and said, hey, this is the new iPhone 5. What do you think of it? Now, of course, people ate it up. They thought it was the best iPhone ever. In fact, a few of the people that he interviewed, um, and this is available on YouTube, uh, just Google it, Jimmy Kimmel iPhone 5. Um, a few of the people who were using it actually said, I have an iPhone 4S. This is much better. This is much faster. The screen is larger. One guy actually said, oh, it has a front and back camera. The old one didn't, despite the fact that he claimed to have an iPhone 4S. Now, I don't know if he really didn't have an iPhone 4S, and so he was just making things up, or if he had no idea what his phone had. But people were given the exact same phone as they already had, and then told Jimmy Kimmel that this one was better. 
I don't know. I find it funny. People, sheeple, really want to be in on the cutting edge. Um, I have that issue myself. I like being on the cutting edge, which is probably why I have an Android phone, because they're better than iPhones. Now, I could do a poll about my iPhone uh, issue, whether you're an Android or an iPhone person. Maybe I'll do that at some point in the future, but today I have a different poll, and it is coming up during the show. You can vote on the poll right during the show just by going uh, to my page right on Ustream.tv, which if you're watching it live, you're already, you're already there. There's a poll. Well, there will be a poll in a few minutes. Um, or maybe there, maybe it's already there, because I actually already started the poll. Um, but the, I'll talk about the poll in a few minutes. And you can vote right there. And then later in the day, I'll get a, a tally of what the votes were. My poll the other day, by the way, uh, on Friday, was about the violence in the Middle East and whether or not people think that the speech or that the movie, the anti-Muslim movie, uh, that has incited all this violence in the Middle East, whether they thought that that was perfect, protected free speech. I talked a little bit about whether I thought it was. If you missed Friday's show, it's available on YouTube or on Ustream. Um, but I talked about it. I, I said I thought it's, you know, sort of borderline. It, it is designed, not designed to incite violence, but it is spoken despite the fact that people know it will incite violence. It's sort of similar to yelling fire in a movie theater, except you're yelling uh, Mohammed is bad in the middle of a Muslim country. Um, so it's similar, except instead of people rushing out of a movie theater, they hurl uh, bricks and bottles and, and bombs at American embassies around the world. Um, where was I going? Oh, one more thing about the iPhone 5. There's a new connector on the iPhone 5. Down at the, uh, down at the bottom of the phone, you see mine has, uh, mine has a micro USB port, and actually mine has an HDMI port too. Um, which I've never used. I assume it works, but I've never used it. I should try it someday. Uh, but the iPhone has used the same connector for a while. Now they're switching it to a new one. And of course, the reason to do this is they say it's because of technological advancements and uh, the fact that they needed it to be thinner. Um, I say that it's because they want people to buy new adapters and they want to make sure that they sell, you know, that they make as much money as humanly possible. The new adapter costs 40 bucks or something crazy like that. But new adapters have shown up on eBay already. There are already knockoff adapters on eBay so that you can connect your iPhone, your new iPhone 5, which you don't have yet because actually after they pre-sold them, they then moved back the date of when people will get them. Um, but you can right now buy on eBay an adapter to connect your new iPhone to your old iPhone adapter just in case you have several of those lying around the house because maybe you've bought you know, all five of the current iPhones, because there's been, what, iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, iPhone 4, and iPhone 4S, I think. Is that right? Were there more than that? But maybe you've bought them all. You've got all these uh, connectors all over the place. Now, all those connectors are going to be obsolete unless you have this new adapter, which are already for sale on eBay. Now, carpe diem when it comes to either buying the new iPhone or buying the new iPhone adapter, because, well, one, buying the new iPhone, you will you'll have an iPhone instead of an Android phone, and so you'll not have as good a phone as you possibly could. Buying the adapter, the new phone isn't out yet. How do they know these things work? Um, so yeah, carpe diem on that. Nicki Minaj in the news again. I don't know why, but this is, this is my eighth show, and I think I've mentioned Nicki Minaj in three previous shows. So when I saw that she was, when I saw her, she was in the news, I swear to God it's coffee. When I saw that she was in the news, I said, oh, I've got to put this on the show. Uh, Nicki Minaj is apparently going to be a new judge for American Idol, along with country singer Keith Urban. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't really read the story. I don't know who they're replacing. I don't know who the judges were last year, um, because to be completely honest, is that show still on? I was unaware that that show was still on. I haven't seen it in years. I have no idea who's won recently. Um, oh, but uh, America's Got Talent, a dog won or something last week. Didn't that happen? How does that happen? I don't know. But American Idol, there's new judges, one of them being Nicki Minaj, who, depending upon who you ask, is just incredibly talented or a no-talent hack. She's going to be one of the new judges on American Idol, which I didn't know was still on because I don't pay attention to American Idol, apparently. I have no idea who's won recently. And I don't remember who won the first couple seasons. The name Kelly Clarkson stands out because I think she was hot. But I don't know if she actually won or if she was a runner-up. Because a lot of times the people that I think should have won were actually runners-up. Like um, Clay Aiken and Ruben's 
Stoddard. Stuttered? Reuben. Reuben and Clay. I don't remember which one won, but I remember that the wrong one won. One, 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 one. That's 11 11 for those of you uh, who are paying attention. So, yeah, there's your Nicki Minaj news for the day. I'll try and keep that up. Not really. But if I do see her in the news again, I am certainly going to point it out. All right, we're going to wrap up with something somewhat funny. Uh, this is a brief from the BostonHerald.com. may have been in other newspapers around the country, but this is where I saw it. And I'm going to read it verbatim. Police are searching for a spell-challenged vandal who hit a central Pennsylvania woman's car with paint over the weekend. New York, I'm sorry, York police say a woman reported Saturday morning that her sport utility vehicle had been sprayed with white paint. On the driver's side door was an un... On the driver's side doors, an unknown perpetrator had scrawled Bicth, B I C T H, B I C T H. Obviously, they were trying to spell bitch, but yeah, instead they spelled Bicth. Investigators say the woman also reported a motorcycle was stolen from her property. It was later recovered in Spring Garden Township. Now, I have to imagine that this vandalism was caused due to. Uh, infidelity or something along those lines. That's usually why people's cars get spray painted with graffiti. I think that is the number one cause of cars getting spray painted with graffiti. Um, I'm really surprised that it didn't say, you can have him, big th Investigators um, continue to look for the perpetrator with the bad spelling. There is no truth to the rumor that he was seen later on Twitter telling the woman to cuff off. For Brewing with Scott Leffler, I'm Scott Leffler. It's Monday, and I'm done. Um, thanks for tuning in. And, oh, I never said the poll question. Well, it's it's on there. If you, if, you, if you had a chance to vote, awesome. I don't know how long it stays up. So if you watch it on YouTube later, the poll might already be over. But the question was, is, do you watch American Idol, yes or no? I don't. I don't know many people that do. Most of my friends are not in that um, demographic of people that watch American Idol. Um, we watch more highbrow stuff like Doctor Who, I think. I know I watch it. I think my friends watch it. They tell me they do. Anyway, I'm done for the day. 22 minutes in. That's about good. That's about right. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about things, although I have no idea what. So you'll have to tune in and find out. Or follow me on Twitter at Scott Leffler. I usually tweet some of my topics. Um, and in fact, usually frequently. I didn't today because I'm sleep deprived. Uh, but I frequently actually tweet links to several of the stories that I'm going to discuss on the show. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, enjoy your day. My column, by the way, appears tomorrow, uh, probably appear tonight, actually, online on my blog. Um, easiest way to get a hold of me, easiest way to find me is to Google me. If you don't want to Google Scott Leffler, um, you can go to about.me slash Scott Leffler, and uh, you'll see links to all of my stuff, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Google+, my YouTube, etc. Um, so if you're looking for me, that's another way to do it. But I will see you tomorrow. Until then, keep on keeping on, and have a good one.